Have an awesome project in mind using some LEDs. In that project, I'll be using some LED fading effect and few LED chaser circuits. But before jumping into that, I thought I should create a short tutorial and show you guys how to fade an LED with or without an Arduino, automatically or manually using a potentiometer. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. Let's first create the fader circuit without an Arduino. The base of the circuit is an operational amplifier IC named LM358. In this circuit, initially the LED slowly glows with increasing brightness and after reaching its maximum brightness, the LED slowly dims its brightness and the process continues. For the non Arduino bit we need, one LM358 IC, one BC547 transistor, 1.47 microfarad capacitor, two 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, one 22 kilo ohm resistor, one 10 kilo ohm resistor, one 4.7 mega ohm resistor, one 220 ohm resistor, one LED and a 9 volt battery. To get the fading effect we need to generate a series of triangular waves. Because of the triangular waves, the LED starts glowing slowly and then slowly dims off and the cycle continues. This setup is done using the LM358 IC. IC. LM358 is a dual operational amplifier IC integrated with two op amps powered by a common power supply. Pin number 1, 2 and 3 are one op amp channel and pin number 5, 6, 7 are the second op amp channel. As the capacitor charges and discharges, the state of the pin number 3 switches from high to low and based on that the pin number 2 of the op amp obtains the desired output. If you want to know more about this IC, please check out my tutorial number 21 DIY IR module. The link is in the description below. So basically the op amp here is used for voltage level detection. Detection. In our circuit, we are applying a voltage on the positive pin, pin number 3, and the voltage to be detected is applied on the negative pin, pin number 2. The transistor acts as a signal amplifier. You will need this if you are attaching a cluster of LEDs. However, just for one LED, you can simply remove it. So this is how my board looks like in 2D and 3D. There are 15 breakout boards in this 100cm by 100cm assembly. Now let's solder all the components to the board. Let's first solder all the resistance to the board. Then let's solder the transistor followed by the capacitor to the board. After that let's solder the LED and the female pin header. To conclude the setup let's solder the IC base and then install the IC into it. So this is how it looks like. Good thing about LEDs is that they can be easily controlled as compared to the traditional light bulbs which means you can easily change their intensity based on your need. Just by making a slight modification to the circuit you can change the brightness of the LED lamp when someone walks in or out of the room. Now if you want to get the same dimming effect but want to manually control the intensity you'll have to find a way to modulate the pulse sent to the LEDs or group of LEDs using a potentiometer. I'm going to do this by generating a PWM signal. What is PWM? Pulse width modulation or PWM is a technique for generating analog results with digital means. PWM varies between 0 to 255. The bigger the value of PWM the brighter the LED is and vice versa. If PWM equal to 0 it's same as ground so the LED will be off. If PWM PWM equal to 255, it's same as VCC, so the LED will be fully on. To get varying analog values, you change or modulate the pulse width. If you repeat this on off pattern fast enough with an LED, the result is as if the signal is steady voltage between 0 and 5 volt, controlling the brightness of the LED. In this setup, we are going to use the 555 timer IC in A stable mode to generate the PWM signals. 555 timer IC will vary the voltage delivered to the LEDs to achieve the dimming effect of the LEDs. For this setup, we need 1 555 timer IC, 1 LED, 1 220 ohm resistor, 2 1 N4 007 diodes, 1 50 kilo ohm potentiometer, 1 10 nanofarad and 100 nanofarad capacitor and a 5 volt battery. Based on the charging and discharging timings of the capacitor, a PWM signal is generated at the pin number 3 of the 555 timer IC. The output is then sent to the LED to produce the dimming effect. So this is how it looks like. 
By rotating the knob of the 10K port, we can adjust the brightness of the connected LED. Now let's repeat this setup using an Arduino. The beauty of Arduino is that it has six digital pins that can be used as PWM outputs. Pin number 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11. PWM signals are sent using the analog write function by passing a value between 0 and 255. Analog write 255 requests a 100% duty cycle, which means always on. And analog write 127 is a 50% duty cycle. For this setup we need an Arduino Uno Nano whatever is handy, a breadboard, a LED, a 220 ohm resistor and a 10k potentiometer. Connect the positive leg of your LED to the digital output pin number 9 of Arduino through a 220 ohm resistor. Connect the negative leg directly to the ground. That's it. That's how simple it is. After declaring pin number 9 as LED pin and setting up the pin mode in the setup section, we are going to loop through and dim the LED in the loop section. By gradually increasing the PWM value from 0 to 255 and then back to 0, we can get the fading effect. In this sketch, the PWM value is set using a variable called brightness. Each time in the loop, it increases by the value of the fade amount. If brightness is at either extreme of its value, 0 or 255, then the fade amount is changed to its negative. So if it is 5, it's set to minus 5 and if it is minus 5 it is set to 5. The next time through the loop this change causes the brightness to change its direction. A delay is added to control the speed of the fading effect. So this is how it looks like. Connect the positive leg of your LED to the digital output pin number 6 of the Arduino to a 220 ohm resistor. Connect the negative leg directly to the ground. Connect the left pin of the 10K port to VCC and the right one to the ground. Now connect the data pin to the A0 pin of Arduino. In this circuit, the potentiometer is working as a voltage divider. One of the outer pin is connected to ground and the other one to VCC. And the middle pin is the voltage output. The wiper position in this setup determines the output voltage. Now let's have a look at the code. Based on my setup, I set the LED pin pin as 6 and the potentiometer pin port as A0. Another variable knob is used to read and store the value of the potentiometer. Pin mode of the LED pin is set to output and we don't have to do anything with the port as its default value is already set as input. In the loop section, I'm first reading the value of the port using the analog read function and then mapping its value between 1 to 255. A potentiometer intakes a value between 1 and 1024 but in our setup it has to be between 1 to 255. The map function divides the value read from the potentiometer into equal intervals of 1 by 255 which is then sent to the LED using the analog write function. So this is how it looks like. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.